Henry VIII is remembered today for being a king who had six wives, and two of them met their bloody end inside the Tower of London. Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were both executed. But one woman who is often considered the king's favourite wife is Jane Seymour. The basis of this is that she was the only wife of Henry VIII who gave him the son he greatly desired. But shortly after giving birth to Edward VI, Jane Seymour died inside of the very rooms she gave birth at Hampton Court Palace. She was a woman who was destined for big things in the Tudor royal circles, and that's because she was part of a family that rose to prominence during the Tudor period. Jane's brothers would go on to dominate the upbringing of Edward until they both would go to the executioner's scaffold for treason. But who was Jane Seymour's mother? Who was the grandmother of the king? Marjorie Wentworth was born in 1478, and she was the daughter of Sir Henry Wentworth and Anne Say. Margaret's grandmother was Elizabeth Cheney, who would also be the great-grandmother of Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, and of course Jane Seymour, linking three of Henry VIII's wives through blood. Marjorie's first cousins were Elizabeth Boleyn and Edwin Howard, and she came from rather high-class backgrounds. Marjorie was also a dependent of King Edward III, and when Henry VIII wished to marry Jane Seymour, he justified her royal heritage by looking back into her lineage and discovering she was related to Edward III. Henry was able to see that Jane was not just a commoner in this sense. However, Marjorie's father, Henry Wentworth, became a prominent part of politics in Yorkshire and Suffolk. He would later become the Sheriff of Yorkshire as he managed to keep the peace during the reign of Henry VII. However, Marjorie as a young child was given a place in her aunt's household, the Countess of Surrey. Here she met the poet John Skelton, and here she inspired Skelton, who was a skilled poet. He believed she was a beautiful woman, and he dedicated much of his poetry to her. In one particular, he compared her to Primrose, and mentioned that Marjorie was a shy and kind girl. But on the 22nd of October 1494, Marjorie married Sir John Seymour. Her husband would become a courtier, who served during the reign of Henry VII and Henry VIII's courts, and the Seymour family had been important in politics for decades. John had been knighted on the field of battle by Henry VII, and he was prominent at many other battles, and he was also at the Field of the Cloth of Gold. When Henry VIII met the French king Francis I, through her husband's activities, Marjorie began to mix more in royal circles, and the pair had ten children together. The eldest was a son named John, and the second eldest was Edmund Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset, who became the Lord Protector during the reign of Edward VI, practically ruling England for the boy king. Edward Seymour would later be executed for treason on Tower Hill, and another son, Henry Seymour, was born, followed by Thomas Seymour, the first Baron Seymour of Sudley, who would marry Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII, shortly after the king's death. Thomas would be accused of grooming the future Elizabeth I, but also he was too executed as he tried to kidnap Edward VI in a jealous rage. Marjorie had two further sons, John and Antony. However, then after this, Jane Seymour was born. Jane would go on to be Henry VIII's third wife and queen consort, and Marjorie had another daughter after Jane, also named Marjorie, and then Elizabeth and Dorothy were born after. Throughout her marriage, it's believed that she and John had a healthy and happy relationship. But following her husband's death, she did not remarry and instead took a bigger part overseeing the education of her children. She also took a bigger role in overseeing Wolf Hall, where the Seymours lived. But interestingly, her daughter Jane was not schooled in the traditional way for high-class women of the time. It would have been expected that for a woman who would become the wife of the King of England, that she was well-educated, schooled in different languages, in dancing and music and court life. But Jane was very different to Henry VIII's other wives. In fact, she was taught more practical domestic skills such as needlework, and it was said that she excelled in this. It's likely that Marjorie never believed her daughter Jane would marry a king. 
She would live to see Jane Seymour's rise to the very top of England. Jane would serve Anne Boleyn as one of her ladies, and she was later described as the fairest of all the king's wives, and as a woman of the utmost charm in both character and appearance, being a gentle and simple woman of great grace. But she would be betrothed to Henry VIII on the day after Anne Boleyn's execution, and then they married. Jane and Henry VIII had flirted greatly before this, and it's possible Jane may have slept with the king before. Now Jane Seymour was never crowned as queen because the plague was ravaging its way through London at the time and as queen she was a strict and formal queen who shunned the lavish frivolity of court life. She reorganised the royal court into one which was upheld with decorum and grace and she didn't really involve herself and meddle in affairs of the state and the king's troubles. She also formed a close relationship with the king's daughter Mary, the future Mary I, as she backed Mary to be restored to court and the royal succession. But the greatest gift Jane Seymour would give Henry VIII was a son, in the form of Edward VI. But Jane's labour had been difficult and long, lasting three nights and two days. The baby was not positioned well. And following giving birth, it was clear that Jane was unwell. She died on the 24th of October 1537 at Hampton Court Palace, but Marjorie Seymour, the mother of Jane, would have to put up with this grief. We consider much about how Henry VIII would have felt losing the mother of the son he greatly craved. However, the pain Marjorie must have felt seeing her eldest daughter dying tragically would have been heartbreaking. It's certain she would have been there to visit her daughter Jane in the days following giving birth but Marjorie would have also had to deal with the execution of Thomas Seymour. Thomas had mentioned, during Edward VI's reign, had been caught outside the royal apartments, armed with a pistol, having shot the king's dog in an attempt to seize the king for himself. Having grown crazily jealous of his brother, Thomas was executed on Tower Hill, and Marjorie, in her old age, would have had to deal with this also. But on the 18th of October 1550, at around the age of 71 or 72, Marjorie Seymour died. She was outlived by a number of her children. But her role in Tudor society and royal history is largely forgotten. But she was very important. Marjorie would be the grandmother of the boy that succeeded the most infamous Tudor king of them all. And she would also be the mother of the queen whose tragic death would have pushed Henry VIII over the edge towards chaos. Marjorie lived a long life, and like a number of her children who were executed and tragically died. However, she was instrumental in the upbringing of her children, and it was this that prepared them for their life at the very top of English politics and the ruling royal family. She is a forgotten Tudor woman, who today deserves to be remembered. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.